Hi, I'm Vabrin Watts with Psychiatric News live from the annual meeting. And today we have joined with us Daniel Falk, who is a health and science administrator at the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Dr. Falk, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So earlier you talked about the effectiveness of varenicline which is known as a drug for um, nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you're talking about the drug as a treatment for alcohol use disorder. So I guess the question is, why alcohol use disorder? That's a good question. Basically, there's a high comorbidity between uh, nicotine use and alcohol use. Um, about 8% of Americans have an alcohol use disorder. About 12% have nicotine dependence and about 3% have a comorbidity, which is about 6 million people still. So there's a lot of people that are, that have both um, on a behavioral level, they're drinking and using nicotine. Also there's converging lines of evidence to suggest that a certain receptor called the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is responsible for the rewarding effects of both nicotine and alcohol. And we've also found that based on animal models, human laboratory models, and small randomized clinical trials, that varenicline actually reduces alcohol use um, and some craving. So these converging lines of evidence told us that this might be a good time to do a large um, multi-site randomized clinical trial. So varenicline now is in phase two um, mm -hmm. trials mm -hmm. for alcohol use disorder. That's right. So what were the demographics of the patients who were studied? They were generally typical of what we see in our clinical trials. They tend to be more white, um, middle-aged males um, who have been drinking uh, for about 20 some odd years on average. Um, they tend to be drinking very heavily, about 13 drinks a day. So that's over two, uh, two six packs a day. So they're they're drinking a lot, um, but they are mostly um, single. They tend to have about 70% have completed um, high school education. So they're, they're quite high functional. So, so the outcomes of the study during, during the clinical trials, what was found, what were the results? The results were found that we looked at a lot of different ways of measuring alcohol consumption, and we found that varenicline reduces um, four different types of drinking patterns. It reduces your percentage of heavy drinking days, where a heavy drinking day is defined as um, having four or more drinks for females on a given day, or five or more for males. And it reduces your drinks per day, your drinks per drinking day, and your percentage of very heavy drinking days. So it, um, and the effect sizes were pretty good, actually. Um, almost double the effect sizes that we found for FDA-approved medications like naltrexone, which are treating alcohol use disorder as well. So we had almost the double the, the, the effect size with varenicline as we have with some of our other FDA approved medications. So we were very excited about that. Okay, so the results from this phase two clinical trial seem positive, so what's next? Unfortunately, Pfizer is the, is the company who, um, who makes uh, Chantix varenicline. It's, it's marketed as Chantix. Um, our understanding is they're not going to necessarily go forward with an alcohol indication. I think it was on the basis of a business decision. But, you know, we definitely are interested in, in this kind of mechanism. Um, medications like varenicline that work on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And so at the very least, we, you know, we encourage more research for these types of uh, compounds. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Falk. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. This is Psychiatric News, live from the annual meeting in Toronto, Canada.